Welcome once again to New Life Family Center. Again, I'm Pastor Larry, and I know you've been with us for a long time or with us for a lot of weeks. I say that for people who are new or are uh, be able to come for a few times and not every week. But we're at it again. We're going to be talking about some things that God has been putting on my heart this week. And and uh, it's been interesting. I was talking to a coworker literally just today, and I said, you know, I, I often have a handful of sermons running around in my head. Now, that's not to say... I'm anything special or, you know, I think most speakers, most pastors uh, find themselves in that mode. Adam and I were talking the other day about how when you're listening to a speaker, the the, the curse is as, as another speaker, as a pastor, you start to go, oh, that's a great message. That's a great sermon. That's a great, that's a great verse. I would do this with it. I would go over here. And you stop listening to the message and you don't mean to it's not you're not saying that speaker is bad or i could do it better it's just your ideas and your creativity gets flowing so with that said i have a handful of of sermons kind of rattle around in my head and prayerfully considering it and you know another one actually really came out of an idea of a co-worker saying something today and and i really pondered today is that is that what i'm supposed to to speak about but i've gone back to this one because it kind of connects with last week and it kind of moves us forward in this topic. So last week we talked about two scriptures out of Matthew, both talking about uh, the second commandment and the golden rule, where it talks about uh, doing unto others uh, as you would have them do unto you, treating your neighbor like yourself, treating people the way you want to be treated, caring about others. And in this time of of what do they call it, the COVID time or the protest slash riot time or whatever we're living in today, um, there's what I'm seeing, I think, is, is, is we're losing caring and love for one another. And it's funny, I work, uh, again, a job where I, where I check in trucks. It's a food distribution warehouse. And um, I've noticed this week, particularly this week, that uh, some of the drivers, I mean, a lot of them, not just a couple, but a lot of them, they're, they're you know, a little surly, a little, little more grouchy than normal. And there's always this thing uh, when I was hired that people go, oh, truck drivers, you're going to find out what they're really like. And I'll tell you, like 98, 99.5% of truck drivers are great men and women. Uh, you have some that have an attitude, that have a chip on their shoulder, but you never know what they're going through. I remember when I was doing this job early on, I, I it was a long haul truck driver. He was from the East Coast and he was on a phone call and it was with his wife. And I could tell, not any details, but there was, there was some friction there going on. And I thought, wow, what a tough thing to be that far away from home and have this friction argument, if you will, going through your mind. The only way to deal with it is by phone calls and there's frustration. You know, you can imagine. By putting yourself, and he was he was not nice to me that day. But by putting myself in his shoes a little bit, I started to have compassion and maybe some understanding. And maybe that wasn't what was going on. Maybe, honestly, maybe he was just a jerk to me for whatever reason. But trying to understand somebody else's position in life. So... With that said, I was I was wondering why this week uh, am I seeing so much tension, so much frustration, so much uh, anger, if you will. Um, and I really think a lot of it has to do with we're tired of of the COVIDness. We're tired of masks. We're tired of rules. Stay indoors, six feet. Um, all of these different things. Uh, We've learned a whole new vocabulary, right, through this. And they're, they're talking about the concerns about students not going back to regular school and be meeting in person with their friends, their teachers, is because they're worried about mental health. And I think that's what we're talking about here, this, that this COVID isolation, this COVID stress about income and jobs and where do we go? You know, people have put off weddings. People have put off buying a house. People have put off making career changes because they don't know what the future holds. And that's stressful for all of us. Now, we may not always think about it in the forefront of our mind, but it's there. 
And so, like I said, this week has been a rough week uh, for me, uh, particularly. Um, and I, I began to process. And I, I've been going, was going back to how we treat people. And again, can I just be honest? Man, I wish I could st- sit here today and, and tell you that I was perfect this week, that I was perfect last week, that I was even perfect one day. I wish I could say that to you, but I'm not. I'm human. And I have to ask for forgiveness a lot. Um, just even if it's nothing I say or do, my feelings and my emotions about situations and people. So today I want to take you to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Uh, and in chapter 13, this is often referred to as the chapter of love. Um, and when we think of love in America, we think of romantic love. We think of, of love that has to do with, you know, uh, a husband and a wife, a boyfriend, girlfriend, you know, a relationship that might be headed towards marriage or those kind of things. And like I said, romantic love. And a lot of the Bible uh, is really, when it talks about love, is really not referring to romantic love. And there's other kinds of love, and you may have heard sermons on those, and I don't, right now I'm not intending to repeat those and go through every kind of love. But I want to talk about this, and I know in my Bible, um, like I told you before, it has headings over the chapters and in chapter 13, the heading is The Excellence of Love. And there's a lot of good stuff in here. But I want to fast forward to the very last verse in 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Um, it says, uh, But now abide in faith, hope, love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. The greatest of these is love. Faith, hope, and love. The greatest is love. Why do I keep saying it? Because I think right now uh, we live in a time where because we are separated, and again, we are able to uh, meet in our church, and but not not everybody is, is coming to our church. They're not comfortable um, with coming to church and those kind of things. And I want you guys, if you're watching today, we miss you. We look forward to seeing you again and coming back together when this thing all finishes its course. God takes care of it. But I would tell you today that uh, when we come together, there's just such an enrichment in our worship. There's such a really cool setting when you get to, you know, say hi to people. And, you know, some people wear masks and some don't. And some people, uh, uh, we don't, they don't shake hands. They shake maybe elbows or how, you know, everybody's concerned and, and, and being respectful of one another and, and those kind of things. But... It's just good to see some of these people and talk. And we get that opportunity. And that's why I can't wait until we as a church come together again as a whole. And we hope that if you're a part of this and you're within range, uh, you know, I know some of you are out of Boise. Um, you know, someday you're over this way on a Saturday night. You got a load in the area that you would drop in on us on a Sunday. I've said before, we've got places you can drop, uh, park your, your trucks out here. Probably got room for couple, three, maybe four, you know, you guys park them as professionals. Um, But in reality, it's important to see one another and love one another. See, I think what Satan is trying to rob us of with the COVID time, and I don't want to give Satan too much ground and too much credit, but he's definitely at work. We can't deny that. And, you know, if he can get us to a point where we're so isolated that we're not feeling the love of one another, we forget, and sometimes it's hard to feel the love between us and God. And I think this is how things are going to turn in the last days in some of these ways. And I am not predicting uh, the end is tomorrow. You've heard that from me before. But I want to say this because sometimes people join in the middle of these things and they'll come, you know, they'll miss all the other ones, but they see this one and they go, he's what he's saying. But I do believe, you know, it does say, say in, the, in the Bible that Satan is like a roaring lion looking for those who he can devour. I've always said this. So if you, if you take the illustration of a lion, who do lions hunt down first? They hunt down the, the, the weak or the young the young and the Lord, so to speak, the weak and the young, the sickly, and the and the old, older ones. 
So now, how does that work in this analogy? Well, well obviously, we know the sick, they're spiritually sick, they're, maybe, they're, they're weak, they're not a part of a church, they're not really strong in their faith. They went to church growing up, but they don't do it now, and they've walked away, and they don't know, and they don't have this active relationship. You know, Satan loves to pick those people off. And then the, the elder ones, not, now not just because you're old, not just because you're old does that make you susceptible to Satan. But in the analogy, what happens with, with, a, with an old animal that the lions would, would pick off first is they can't keep up with the pack. Their, their uh, bodies don't function the way it used to. And, you know, we have to be careful to, we live in a society here in America that is all about youth, all about youth. And we've got to be careful not to leave those who are, who are older than us in the dust because we want to go play, we want to go do, we have, you know, the ability, you know, and I, I, with the physical things going on with me, I'm slowly, maybe more quickly than slowly, losing the ability to do some of the things I used to do. But we should not leave people on the sidelines in church. And we should be talking to them, bringing them in the fold and, and caring for them. But it's important that I think right now that we love people. You look at the news, and again, I'm speaking of Portland, and Portland's on the news nationally every night, and I've lost track of how many days uh, they've been um, protesting and mostly rioting. Um, and, and as I've said before, I think the sadness here in this situation is the message of you know making some reform and good changes is being lost to all of the destruction and looting and those kind of things that's going on. Side note, but we can see this happening and there, there's very little, if any, love going on down there. Just this last weekend, there was, or this last week, there was uh, a gentleman that was pulled out of his truck and, and uh, beat up pretty badly, you know, and some just some different horrific things that are going on. And it's like it, people are getting a license to, to do things that shouldn't be happening to one another. Go back to a few weeks ago when I said, you know, what are those who say good is evil and evil is good? That's what we're seeing. We're seeing in Portland, the prosecutor refusing to uh, bring criminals up on charges in the court and if they've broken the law. We're seeing mayors and people saying that it's okay to do some of the damage and not stopping it. We live in chaos to some degree. We can go to our homes. You may live in a city or a town where the rioting doesn't take place, that it's not even a problem, that you hear about it on the news, but you don't bother yourself with it. I would just say we need to be concerned about our nation that God has given to us. This, this land, this country, God gave to us and we're not treating it well. And as Christians, sometimes just like I can get frustrated at that driver at work, uh, we're losing the ability to love one another. It's just kind of being ripped right out of us because we're so frustrated with people you know, one of my coworkers, well, that's more than one, but they have a saying sometimes when they're frustrated, they go, oh, I hate people. And yeah, sometimes we hate people, but that's not what God called us to do because the greatest thing that we have is love. Love for ourselves, love for God, love for other people, other mankind, men, women, children, and caring for them and caring what happens to them. So I wanna leave us with that today. Last week, we, we talked about treating each other, treating others how we would want ourselves treated and, be, and loving our neighbors. And today, I would just tell you that this passage, 1 Corinthians 13, 13, the greatest of these is love. Let's pray. Father, I would pray today that uh, we cannot love because we want to love, because we decide to love. Father, love comes from you. We need your love in these desperate dark times. 
And so, Father, I, I pray that as we pray, as we, as we worship, as we sing, as we read your word, we would be filled with your love that we could give it away to others who sometimes are hard to love. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for being here. Hope to see you again next week. Uh, well, I'll never see you, but I hope you're back. Uh, keep sending me the texts and emails. I love hearing from you guys. Hitting our, hitting our Facebook page with comments on what you're thinking of the videos. Getting a lot of positive feedback. I'm glad you're enjoying it. We'll see you next time.